All right, so in the previous video, we wrote Python code to detect a bullish engulfing pattern in Papa John's stock. But we don't always wanna be analyzing that particular symbol, obviously. We want to sort through a list of all of the instruments that we have available. So one place uh, people often focus is on the S&P 500. So that's a list of 500 plus stocks, and we can filter those down to figure out which ones we might want to uh, buy or sell. And so let's get a list of the, uh, the S&P 500 companies and their tickers, and then we can go through each of those stock tickers, download uh, their history, and then uh, scan them for uh, bullish, candle, bullish engulfing candlesticks, uh, and we can focus on the most recent week of price data rather than uh, looking through the whole year since we don't care about what happened a year ago at this point. So uh, to get the latest list, we can look at Wikipedia. There's a lot of S&P 500 uh, company lists out there that are out of date. Uh, an easy way to tell is if it doesn't have a Twitter, which was added to the S&P 500 more recently. Um, a lot of times you'll find a list of the S&P 500 from 2015. So you wanna get the most recent uh, list from, uh, for instance, Wikipedia, since it edited. It's edited, um, and I just copy and pasted this list, and then I wrote a quick Python script uh, to uh, split it on tabs and dump this to a CSV file. And I went ahead and committed um, that file to uh, Finance Hacks, which is our GitHub repository, and there's this data sets directly, directory, and if you look and click SP500 Company CSV, um, this is a list that's up to date, and you can tell uh, that it's up to date because it has uh, Twitter and some more, uh, some newer symbols that were added to the S&P 500 later. So let's go through the CSV file, download the historical uh, data for all of those tickers, and then use our candlestick uh, pattern recognition to uh, flag stocks that match our, our pattern. So I'm in the uh, Visual Studio Code uh, directory that I created earlier, and um, let's go ahead and get this SP 500 company CSV locally and so i can just view the raw data of this and paste it in or you can just clone the whole repository um, i'm going to do it like this just paste it in like that you can see there's actually more than 500 companies some people don't know that uh, because you'll look some companies have more than one class of stock so there's google alphabet class a class c i think under armor is similar there's class a and class c so there's actually like 505 i think so we have the csv file here and then now we can write a new um a new program to download uh, SP500 history. And then that'll be a Python file um, that we uh, uh, that has a script that we create. And we can do the same thing, import uh, yfinance as yf. And then we'll basically load uh, the history of all of those uh, tickers and um, save, those, save a CSV file for every single one that we can reference it later. So um, I'm gonna import CSV again. And then similarly uh, to what we did last time, uh, we're going to um, open a CSV file. Um, so I'm gonna do CSV reader, and then I'm gonna use Python's open, and then we can open up our CSV file. So it's sp500companies.csv. All right, so now I have a file that's open, the sp500 company CSV, and I also have a CSV reader where we pass this open file to. And then that will give us a way to iterate over this CSV file line by line. So now I can just do for company in companies. And then let's just print what that looks like and just so you can see the list, see if this works. So uh, Python 3 download SP500 history. So now you see we have this list of tickers and companies and it's correctly um, split between uh, the ticker and the company name. All right, so now we can uh, pull these lists. We can unpack them into a tuple. So let's just do symbol uh, common name equals company. And then so what we'll do is save a bunch of files um, that have, uh, it's like the ticker number, the ticker symbol dot CSV. So we'll save something like, uh, so WYNN will save a WYNN dot CSV. So we're just gonna save the 500 plus CSV files to our local disk. That way we can analyze them in the future. So let's create um, a bunch of new files. So let's make uh, another file handle called a history file name. So this will be the file name of the, of the file. So we'll do history slash, and then we'll do a string, a dynamic string here. And so we'll format it with uh, the symbol. So we'll have a file name. So it's history slash, for instance, apple.csv, right? And then we'll open the file. 
So we'll do f equals open history file name, and it's going to create um, the file for us. If we do open and then pass w as a second parameter, it'll open this new file uh, for writing. Okay, and so I'm going to create the go ahead and create the directory in advance, and I'm going to call it um, history. And then so we're going to try to fill this directory history up with a bunch of CSV files. So we create and open a bunch of files, and then we'll use our Y finance package again to do yf.ticker and then pass it the symbol. And then we can do um, the data frame equals uh, the ticker's history. And we'll do a period of one year again. So period equals one year. And then we can just write to our file df.2csv. So we'll write to the file and then close this file. Okay. So we're just creating a whole bunch of files here. And let's run this download history and see if it will correctly pull the, the historical data and write it to a new file for each ticker. And so we should get a whole bunch of file names. So you see as it's iterating through, it's creating a whole bunch of files on my local file system. Uh, most of them are in alphabetical order here. So I'll open one real quick while it's doing this. Um, so we'll see like AMD, for instance, uh, you can see how it opened the year um, in the teens and it should have finished uh, in the 40s here. So it's one of the best performing S&P 500 stocks. Um, it uh, over doubled in value, I believe. Um, so that was a great one to buy. Um, so I'm going to let this continue uh, to run for a little bit, probably take a couple of minutes and then continue the video.